And good day. I am Tamara Scott. Thank you for joining us on Truth For Our Time as we help you when the headlines hit home. If God expects you to live through it, he's directed you how to do it, and we help you find that as well on this show. We have a full slate today, and I thank God for that, just coming in from Israel uh, uh, late Sunday night and um, catching up here in the state. Many things have been happening, but of course, as you know, the legislative session is uh, in tow, and a lot happening on the education th- uh, committees and with bills there with Common Core. Public hearings now happening in Iowa on NGS as New Generation Science Standards. So I'm so thrilled that Michelle Crystal will be joining me in studio. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, Crystal Logue, excuse me, Mich- uh, Gretchen Logue, and possibly Ann um, Gosel from Missouri Watchdog will be joining us a little later in the show. And Aaron Tuttle is to be joining us a little bit later. Aaron has done work on Lamar Alexander's bill that is at the federal level and kind of dissecting that for us. She's written several papers on that. So as you can tell, it's a full show. We're talking about the education of your children. We're talking about your authority as a parent. We're talking about the cost to the taxpayer. So we'll be getting into those things right away today. First off, I want to tell you, and Ryan, I don't know if you can pull this up. I don't know that we talked about it. The um, bill in the West Virginia legislature, I think I sent it in the first sheet, happening right now, the vote Wednesday in the West Virginia legislature on pain capable. We know that unfortunately it was even Republicans that uh, kind of uh, um, threw us a spin at the federal level and uh, back down. Today happening in West Virginia, the House of Delegates on Tuesday voted down three amendments for the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, but the amendments offered by Democrats would have added the exception for victims of rape, incest, and the exception for life of the mother. We know a baby is a baby, and we're trying to save the life of babies. And another perpetrator, another crime, doesn't make the crime of murder better. It just makes the mother of a dead child. And often they then uh, have great issues traumatically, emotionally, with that same issue. They don't want to become perpetrators either. And so the Health and Judiciary Committees both have this bill before them. Uh, um, They've been dealing with it, and that vote happens today. We hear the governor may veto it, as he did last year, and how fortunate of that. Um, One, not to listen to the people, but two, to have such a wrong moral stance. Uh, Having just toured Auschwitz and Birkenau camps, I cannot tell you the similarities and I cannot allow it within my soul to go unspoken. Will not. Every life God creates deserves to take their first breath, especially here in America. All right, moving on. Do you have the meme about the tigers and the kitties? You are keeping right up with me, Ryan Northfield, and I thank you for keeping things running while I was away in Israel. Uh, Just a great little reminder for you, going into the prayer room, coming out of the prayer room, the difference it makes. Remember, when we hit our knees, we can always stand. We'll have power behind us. We're not just going to the prayer room, we're going to the throne room, and we can make a difference. I thought that was a good reminder for those of you who watch visibly. This show is on uh, Webcast One Live, webcastonelive.com. We thank Mac and uh, Webcast One Live Studios for making that possible. We thank Crave, Christians for America, Christians Reviving American Values, Crave Revival, Christians for America for sponsoring this show. We thank others who are coming along, considering coming along, and if that might be you, we encourage you to do so as well. You can always get a hold of me on Facebook, Tamara Scott. You can get us a hold of our Facebook page, Truth For Our Time, as well. All right, we're going to hop into it, if we may. Michelle Crystal, thank you so much for joining me in studio, and we're just going to take this along the path. Uh, You've been in state while I've been away. You've been dealing with this firsthand, doing other interviews. What is happening here in Iowa that taxpayers' parents need to know? Well, thanks, Tamara, for having me on. And and, uh, we missed you when you were gone, and you've missed (laughs) a lot. Um, Actually, there's quite a few things going on, Um, a couple big ones. Um, Tonight, first and foremost, actually, the Iowa Department of Ed is actually going to have public forum and meetings to discuss what's called Next Generation Science Standards. They're looking at bringing this in to replace the current science standards that we have in Iowa. And so they're asking for the public input, which is phenomenal. And it's only, though, unfortunately happening four times in the next week and a half. But the first one is tonight in Waukee. And what they're doing is they just want to hear what the public has to say about introducing these new science standards. Now, looking at the science standards, 
the state of Iowa currently is graded a D for science. And the Fordham Institute, which is a nonprofit um, organization, looked at all 50 states. And what they considered to be on a grade level, they are saying I was not doing very well and they're actually receiving a D. But with the new next generation science standards, Fordham has actually graded them a C. So yes, Iowa, we would get better, but the last time I checked, um, a C was not something that was very acceptable in a statewide way to adopt. So this, uh, this was the first and foremost thing that gave me grave concern is why are we replacing something that really isn't any better? And what this is, Tamara, it's basically the last nail in the coffin to roll out all federalized education standards. And science was the last one they had to do. And this is what would actually happen. So NGSS was actually just brought up of 26 different states, and they decided what standards should be for science. The unique thing with this, and the reason Fordham Institute actually gave them a C, was nowhere in these standards are they actually talking about chemistry or physics. And they say the reason why is math has actually been null and void um, for all of the science standards going forward. And if we are teaching Common Core math the way we currently are, no kids will actually have the fundamentals to actually be able to do these higher end type of science as well. Um, That was probably my biggest issue. So I wanted to decide, okay, I need to talk to people who actually were on this task force that the Iowa Department of Ed put together. I was able to reach out, talk to some people on the task force, and um, this was stunning to me. They said a task force was created. It was of 28 people. I actually do have the list of people that were on the task force. It goes anywhere from a few high school students to a curriculum director, um, actually to a mom, and they wanted to look at, all right, let's look at next generation versus what we have now. This entire task force only met three times before they voted to take the next generation science standards on. When asked how it compared, um, they said they were never allowed to compare the Iowa science standards to the new NGSS because they said it was comparing apples to oranges. Never were there, she said never was there a debate or a dissent on NGSS. Every speaker that was allowed to speak was stating how it was superior, but they never showed how. She actually sent me all of the agenda notes, and in the agenda for the day of the vote, the vote was never written on the agenda. And when the debate started about comparing the two, the debate was quickly stopped, and the vote took place. There was only one person in the entire room who said, do not pass the next generation science standards. She actually brought this Fordham report Um, and brought it to the table and said, why are we picking something with a C? Um, She was told they weren't allowed to talk about that, that that was not a fair comparison. And she said this was the only science standard that they looked at. Um, And I asked her, I said, well, gosh, look at, what about Massachusetts? What about Indiana? They all received A's. She said no other standard was ever talked about or brought up. It was Iowa or NGSS. That to me is a huge problem. And that's what they're going to be discussing tonight, as well as three other times by the public to hear what your input is. Okay, first off, having been in this battle a long, long time and dealing with public schools and understanding that public hearings are often pony dog and pony shows. um, You have a good group of parents you think that will come. What do you think parents need to understand? When we're talking NGSS, is this where the cost increase comes in in the testing or is that SBAC? Um, that's one and the same. It's a totally separate component. So right now, like all of your children are probably have been or will be taking Iowa assessments. And currently in the Iowa assessments, they do test for everything, math, English, science. This is the old fashioned Iowa basic. This is, test this is not schools. Iowa basic. This is Iowa assessments, assessments that we are still currently in. So this does encompass science. If we adopt NGSS, that actually will be a separate test that we will take if we adopt smarter balanced testing, which is what they're going to be voting on legislatively this session. So currently, Iowa assessment costs the state, or actually your district, $4.25 to take. And that is all encompassing. That is all areas of curriculum. 
if we follow a t- another task force was actually put together and they are saying that we should take one of two federalized tests and this one for Iowa, it would be Smarter Balance Assessment Consortia. Which our governor signed an executive order he did. saying that we were going to pull back, but the Department of Education seems to be moving full head. Which is odd because Brad Buck, who is the head of the Department of Ed, actually agreed and is on record agreeing with Governor Branstad that yes, we should get out of Smarter Balance and we should have local control. But what has happened is that a task force was put together and the task force came back and said, oh, of everything we've looked at, Smarter Balance is going to be the best. So what that has done is now actually put a, a non-elected board, which, the, is, which is one, the Iowa Department of Ed, they put together a task force of another group of unelected people that we do not know who they are, who not only went against the governor, but they actually disagreed with their own <laughs> Iowa Department of Ed director and said, you know what, Smarter Balance is better. So my issue with Smarter Balance is an entirely another issue, but they're ramrodding this all through thinking that we will not catch on. This test, we as Iowans, it will actually cost $27 a student to take the exact same test that we are currently paying $4.25 to. If we adopt this new next generation science standards, Tamara, we're going to be paying an additional $15 on top of that because Smarter Balance does not have a science standard testing already embedded in it. $15 per student. And I can't remember, I don't have the fees in front of me, but we've been talking about this for almost two years. We've been talking about this price increase for almost two years. And the fact that when you take the numbers of grades that will be tested, the number of students in each grade, it's millions. It's going to cost Iowa taxpayers millions more each year. Well, not only millions, we're we're talking... um Currently, everybody is talking about the the 4%, fighting over the 4% increase in the education bill. None of the money that has been talked about has even talked about this Smarter Balance Assessment Consortia. And when we, I have, and our group has reached out to Representative Ron Jorgensen, who actually does lead the um, education committee, um, he has not addressed this. He said that it has not come up yet at all. And what is Ron Jorgensen's contact? Do we have it if people wanted to contact him? You can always get a hold of your legislators by their first name, dot, their last name, at legis.iowa.gov, legis.iowa.gov, ron.jorgensen, I'm thinking it's J-O-R-G-E-N-S-O-N, I'm not exactly sure about that. You can go on the legislative website, legis.iowa.gov, do a search, you'll find him in the house, head of the, head of the education so this is nothing new for we've we this is not a surprise this is not a looky here we were warning folks of this like i said i think march two years ago i had a meeting in waterloo representative sandy and salmon sandy salmon we discussed this in front of that group and several others beyond that what do people need to know um please show up tonight at Waukee and the Waukee um, schools. That, that, that is actually where the first public um, forum, it's going to be at the Waukee Community School District office, and that's on 560 Southeast University Avenue in Waukee, and it's tonight from 430 to 630. And what they're just asking, they're asking for people to come and um, give their input on what they think should happen. What's interesting is legislators have never been told about next generation science standards. So this was not something they voted on. Um, Brad Buck did this wholly and solely and was trying to bring it into the Iowa Department of Ed. And to get around, I guess, legislation, they thought they'd pat everybody on the head and put together a so-called task force. But I don't think there's much of a choice when you say it's this or nothing. And it begs the question, why only offer NGSS, which is actually a, coming from a private company but is backed by government tax dollars by the the federal government and at that point you have no say so um iowans do not have a say so in the test in gss test they it, it, it's just unreal we as parents are getting pushed out teachers are getting told what to do and how to teach and it's all beholden to an unelected board and you've got more meetings besides tonight coming up we do we actually um tuesday february 24th in Atumwa. 4.30 to 6.30, um, Great Prairie Area Education Agency. The following day, Wednesday, in Dubuque, um, 4.30 to 6.30 at the Keystone Area Education Agency. And then Thursday, 
February 26th in Sioux City. And Sioux City actually is the home ground of Representative Ron Jorgensen. So that would be interesting to get some people up there and actually would be great if he actually could go up and answer some questions as well. Um, but if you actually want to find all of these sites there um, on iowarestored.com, it is a website. We do have a link to it. Um, and, or you can get on the Iowa Department of Ed website and they will show you the link and where and when to meet as well. And I think Concerned Women for America of Iowa may have them on their Facebook page or on their state page as well. I'm looking right now. Um, so I think we can find that for people very easily. But you're right to go up to see where Ron Dorgensen is would be a great help if folks can do that. Is that one at 430 as well? Yes, it is. Isn't it funny to you that these are always when somebody's usually working, getting off work, picking up the kids from school? Not an easy time to get anywhere. Well, tonight, too. Tonight, not only are you getting off work, but also, I don't know about a lot of people, but uh, church is on Wednesday nights as well, and it falls into that time frame. So it just begs to wonder of 50% of the, the meetings are actually being held during work and church hours. And you would not remember this, but clear back in the day when I was a kid, the schools actually worked in my small town with the churches. They promised that they would not give extensive homework, not have big tests on Thursday morning, if all the churches would move to Wednesday night rather than some having Tuesday, some having Thursday. So all the churches moved their midweek service to Wednesday night to work with the school. And now look. <laughs> exactly. We have sports and everything else. They didn't keep up their promise. You can't, you can't dance with the devil. You just you got to hold line and do, do what is best. So you're right. Those things are on. Um, if you just go to HTTP, uh, the, the semicolon and double backslash Iowa, IA.CWFA.org, all those sites are listed right there for you. And um, I do think that the Thursday, uh, February 26th, Sioux City would be a good one for folks to attend. If folks aren't comfortable speaking out, if they just go and show their support, it would be great. That would be great. No one no one actually has to talk. This is actually going to be facilitated. And I'm curious how it's going to be set up tonight. If you just want to go and mingle with the crowd, I intend on finding other people's um, opinions on this. I would love it if science teachers would stand up and, and show it. My, my only... <sighs> This is a huge concern of mine is we're rolling these science standards out for all of us here in Iowa, We instead of piloting it. Why don't we pilot it somewhere to see actually what the teachers think when they've actually had a chance to fully implement it? Well, instead of asking that, we're forcing everybody to do it. How do we really know it's any different or any better when we're rolling it out as a whole lump sum? And Standards are standards, and there has been a biology teacher that has spoken out against them because the standards are so rigorous, and they're asking you basically to use no creativity. You have to stay on the script, and that's an issue right now with math and ELA standards currently with Common Core. No one can really veer off the path. How is this going to be any different? And we've heard from the experts, uh, Einstein, uh, students who have learning disabilities will not They'll, they'll just be done. They'll fail. They will not make it. They won't They won't get to come through when you have only one formula that can work. Uh, let's talk about a couple other things. Is, is there anything else we need to touch on on the NGSS? If people want information, they're not sure what this really means. There's a lot of acronyms in all of this. SBAC, NGSS, Common Core, Iowa Core. It's so confusing to parents who don't have the time, who don't have the capacity. Like you, Michelle, you have dug into this. You have devoted years to this at this point. Correct. If somebody just wants information, who can they call? You know, I don't know. I think we all are so used to our devices. And so I'd ask you to actually go to their website and just Google NGSS, there Next go. Generation Science Standards, and also a great one. Um, they are nonprofit. They're non-biased. But look at Fordham Institute, and that's F-O-R-D-H-A-M Institute, and say NGSS. And that is a great overall review of what they think of it. And it rates, and you can actually look to see where your state ranks. And I'm putting that on the Truth For Our Time Facebook page right now. I'm putting that Fordham link. I think it's the same one on New Generation Science Standards. I've just posted it on the Facebook link, Facebook page for Truth For Our Time right now. So it's there if you want to find it. All right. Um, let's talk very quickly about the um, uh, the broadband bill. I believe right now in our legislature we have the ABCs of bad education. We have an anti-bullying bill. And I have books that will tell you um, anti-bullying programs often increase peer-on-peer -peer victimization. Bullying increases in schools and districts where they have bu anti-bullying programs. We um, have the, and that one's being pushed heavily right here in Iowa by our own uh, um, 
Republican governor. I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but it's you know trying to do the right thing with the wrong method. And until we just come back to respecting all people, the golden rule was one of the best things we had. Uh, when we had the Bible in school, when we had the prayer in school, that 22-word uh, prayer, very, very vague, very topical prayer about protecting us, blessing our teachers, our parents, and our children. When we had that, we had better grades, safer schools. We had respect for each other, no matter who, what label, how, what group we defined ourselves as being. The bowling bill, this bowling bill, again, overreaches. It uh, usurps parental authority. It expands school authority outside school premises, off school grounds, invites teachers, and entices them into the, uh, the uh, Internet stalking of students, in my opinion, looking for trouble. If it, it, uh, it creates an, a budget increase in an already, by, by, by forming a bully squad in an already overbloated budget when we already have lean finances this year, many things pulling at our finances. There are already rules on the books, laws, uh, 280.28 already takes care of bullying. It is already in there. What they call SOGI, sexual orientation, gender identification, is already protected in there. So this does not do anything new in that area except this one thing. It stops parents from being notified if they might have an adverse reaction to a child student, a student's sexual expression. So the people who should be the first to know will now be the last to hear. The parents, the stop guard, the ones who are responsible, the ones who could make a difference. This, is, this is, was a push by many of the activists, you can guess who, last year, and apparently it's in this, this year, year's language. The B, the A, that's the, anti, that's the A, of the bad education, the B is a broadband bill. We warned about this last year, Michelle. Jane Robbins came, was treated very poorly in legislative subcommittee hearings, and she warned at that time, if you go with SBAC, if you go with NGSS, you will need broadband expansion. You will not be able to have the online testing. The capabilities will not be there. It will cost your taxpayers. Henry Burke, says, Henry Burke has done cost analysis, state-specific cost analysis. He says that states that stay away from Common Core and the online testing will save money no matter how much the federal government gives them. Comments on the broadband, Michelle. Well, what's interesting is I've actually, um, we work with a group of amazing people. Um, and as someone that I, I do work with, her name is Heather, and she actually is an engineer, and she dove in to these broadband bills, which were just released. And what's interesting is I will back up. I know we throw out a lot of acronyms, but Smarter Balance is another huge one. It's a very big one we're pushing. That's the one where we talked about the cost will increase exponentially, and your district will actually have to come up with the monies for that. There was an individual who did email and ask all 300 superintendents here in the state of Iowa, what do you guys think? You know, How are you going to take on Smarter Balance? The one thing where Smarter Balance is different than our current Iowa assessments is 100% of it is online, which means every school district will have to have the capability either by iPads, computers to take it. Not only that, but you're going to have to have the broadband width to do it. The schools are going to have to come up with that. And that was a, that was a question that was actually posed to all the um, superintendents. And I will not say the superintendent who said this. I have not asked uh, permission. But what's interesting is when that question was posed about the broadband width, the superintendent said that they are putting a lot of trust and faith in Representative Ron Jorgensen. They actually said, I applaud Ron's efforts to be well-informed and lead us as an education committee director in this discussion. As far as the technology issues, they are urging for smarter balance because these broadband issues are going to be brought forth and the monies will be there. What is very um, interesting with that is that the actual smarter balance task force um, was actually warned by um, uh, uh, Mr. Duke, who actually said, you know what, we need to pull back. How are we going to come up with the money for the technology? How are we going to come up with the money um, to figure out how we're going to pay for this year over year? And that letter was actually discarded, and it was not put in the task force final recommendation to say, hey, let's do smarter balance. So someone in our group, Heather, actually went back and said, let's look at the broadband bills. What's interesting is it says absolutely nothing not one word, nothing about funding school technology upgrades, nothing. 
So unless there's a bill or an amendment out there that we're not aware of, there's nothing that's going to address that huge gaping hole. And what's interesting is this broad bandwidth, um, they're actually going to pull over $2 million from our current Iowa infrastructure budget to help pay for that. Uh, that is a pretty hot topic right now because we're talking about $0.10 cent a gallon tax hike um, for our gas to pay for something that maybe this $2 million could have went to instead of addressing a broadband with issue. And um, Ryan, did you happen to get that commercial? Did we able to find that commercial with the school bus going off the bridge? Okay, for the, some of you online, I've seen it floating around Facebook. We have right now Iowa, very very interesting propaganda as uh, the Concrete Association, who's at the NGA, AGS, uh, something, uh, Association of General Contractors, the, the, the cement folks, who you can imagine make a lot of money on bridge building, are wanting this gas tax. Now, remember this. Gas tax is constitutionally protected. This is true. So that money has to go to the bridges. But that doesn't mean that's the only money that goes to the bridges. As Congressman King said way back when he was either a representative or a senator in the Iowa State House, we ought to be thinking ahead and putting more money aside for the infrastructure. The gas tax is the only constitutionally protected money that goes into it, but that doesn't mean we can't add other monies into it, being responsible, long-headed leaders that we're elected to be. Wise thinking, Steve King. That didn't happen. That was years ago. He's been in the Congress for I don't know how many years, so that's been at least a half a decade. But we didn't do it. And so now we're looking at these messages of propaganda of school buses going off the bridge with our children because we've been irresponsible and need help with our bridges. And Michelle, you're saying this is going to take more money away from the infrastructure fund? It looks like it. According to, to what um, I personally did not dig into, and I'm reading what her synopsis was, and it seems to be kind of a big deal. Um, not it, oh, Everybody seems to be passing, passing the buck. And what's interesting is that these superintendents are thinking that this money is coming from somewhere. They're putting a lot of trust into the legislation. Um, but also people need to remember if they don't know this, but in 2006, um, the Iowa legislation actually turned over majority of the curriculum and all the testing control to the Iowa Department of Ed. So if you're wondering how things are getting through, how is this happening? Well, it's because the Iowa Department of, Ed, or of, of Education actually can do kind of whatever they want. And when you're having a task force put together and you're sending it through legislation to rubber stamp it, that doesn't seem like that's much of a debate for the um, publicly elected officials. That, and you just took the accountability away from your elected people. This is why we have all bills of appropriations are supposed to start in the House so that you have the quickest re recall or quickest response when someone misspins your purse. And when they're non-elected people, you have no recourse, very little recourse. We need to see a whole cleaning of house, it appears here. Well, I, th I agree with you there, but also let's, let's have it more transparent. I'm looking at, um, in December, when the Smarter Balance Task Force met, they have why they decided to pick Smarter Balance to replace the Iowa assessment. But was omitted, as I'm looking at the letter right now, it was dated August 4th, 2014, by David Dude, who's a PhD He's actually the chief operating officer um, for E or UEN Tech Director Director's Memorandum for Iowa City Community School. He actually addresses the cost and support of doing the Smarter Balance. He's saying right now that we don't know what it's going to cost down the road. How are we going to come up with the funds for this? And what's interesting, let's look at states that have already adopted it. Let's see what's going to happen. California has adopted it. You actually have school districts now coming after the state of California. Suing? To pay. They want their money from the state because the state put every district into Smarter Balance. The districts don't have the money to pay for it. Wisconsin is now trying to get out of it because it's costing Wisconsin millions of dollars than what they were told. And now that they're in it, the costs are accruing over and over and over again. And believe me, the 4% budget that the Democrats and Republicans are fighting over currently, that, that doesn't even begin to touch the cost of a test. All right. What we're going to do right here is take a break. We'll go with our sponsors. We thank Crave. Uh, uh, Christians for America for sponsoring us. We thank Webcast One Live when we come back. We are going to have Gretchen Logue following us, 
And we may have a couple others on the phone lines as well. We'll be adding to the discussion. Great information here for you today that you need to have. Feel free to forward this link at the end of the show. We'll have it up for you. You can forward the link to others to uh, get involved as well. Call your neighbor. These are your children. You're their advocate. And I don't think we've even touched on the data collection, the overreaching, intrusive uh, federal stake that will take away from your local control. We'll be right back after these messages with more good information. Thank you for caring enough to be involved. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey, psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car... I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. 